Hello and welcome to Get to Know Science. This video is an A-level video for circular motion and it's part two. When it comes to circular motion, there are three main types of scenario that we need to be familiar with. And in this video, I'm gonna run through each of the three. So there's horizontal circles, there's a circle at an angle, and there's vertical circles. And the main thing that changes is the nature of the centripetal force. Because remember, our key equation, F equals mv squared over r. And it's that F, the nature of the resultant centripetal force, which is going to change in each case. So let's begin with horizontal circles. I'm giving you two examples here. The first is a mass on a string and it's being swung in a horizontal circle. And this one is quite simple because we only have a certain number of forces acting. There's the tension in the string or the rope and there's the weight of the object. Those are the only two forces. And since the weight is acting at a right angle perpendicular to the plane of the circle, it has no contribution to the centripetal force. The only force that contributes is the tension in the rope. So in this case, T, the tension, equals mv squared over r. But here's a second example, a car driving in a circle. What provides the centripetal force? Well, we have the weight downwards, mg. There's a normal contact force upwards, which I'll label n, but these are perpendicular to the plane of movement, so they don't provide any centripetal force. The only other force is friction. I'll label that fr and it acts inwards towards the center of the circle. So if F equals mv squared over R, F is going to be the frictional force between the tires and the road. So FR equals mv squared over R in this case. And that's why cars skid when friction is reduced by ice or by water on the road, because this force is not large enough to maintain circular motion. So here's our next type of scenario. Circling at an angle is more complicated because the tension in the rope here is at an angle to the plane of the circle. And we can show the angle here and we label the angle theta. So to find the centripetal force, we need to find the horizontal component of the tension. And in this example, it's going to be T sine theta. And that will be equal to mv squared over r. So our centripetal force is being provided by T sine theta, the horizontal component of the tension. All the other forces, like the weight, again are acting at right angles to the plane of the circle so they have the weight has no influence on the centripetal force it's just the horizontal component of the tension and the way we work it out will depend on which angle you are given in this example we're given this angle but we may be given a different angle and that will change what we write here you might see it looking like this instead and this is a car on a banked road or on a banked track. And we need to think, what is the centripetal force here? So let's analyze it. Let's look at the diagram below. Uh, let's look at what forces are acting. We have the weight, mg, as always, acting vertically downwards. We have the normal reaction force acting upwards. We have friction acting like that. So now we need to think which of those forces has a horizontal component because it's those forces that are contributing to the centripetal force. And we see here 
it's going to be the horizontal component of the normal reaction force and the horizontal component of the frictional force. So our centripetal force will be FR cos theta being the horizontal component of the frictional force plus N sine theta that's the horizontal component of the normal reaction force and that will give us mv squared over r. So the combination of these two is going to provide the centripetal force in this case. Okay so the final and trickiest scenario is the vertical circle. Imagine a mass on a rope swung in a vertical circle. Two forces are acting here. There's the weight of the object and there's the tension. So which of them provides the centripetal force? Well, it depends on where it is in the circle. At the bottom, we have the tension here, T, and we have the weight, Mg. The weight and the tension are in opposite directions. So to provide a resultant centripetal force, T must be larger than the weight. Therefore, our equation is going to look like this. So the resultant force is going to be the difference between the tension and the weight. And the tension must be bigger than the weight in this case to provide a resultant inward force. If the mass is at the top of the circle, now both the tension, T, and also the weight, Mg, are acting downwards so they both provide the centripetal force and it means that the tension must decrease from what it was before. So at the top our equation will look like this. So T and Mg are both providing our centripetal force so the equation will look like that. And finally, at the side, the only force acting inwards towards the center of the circle is T, the tension. And what about the weight now? Well, the weight still acts downwards. And because it's at a right angle, it's perpendicular, it will not contribute towards the centripetal force. So here, it's simply T equals mv squared over r. Okay, so that was just a quick run through of the three main scenarios that can come up at A levels when it comes to circular motion. You need to know how to tackle each one and I hope this video helped. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe and share and I'll see you all in my next video. Thank you very much for watching.